it will manifest according to the Scripture. You say, well, there's places in the Bible that it didn't. It says in Hebrews 11, at the end of the Scripture, it said people chose to be martyred. I don't understand this 100%. They chose by faith not to walk into certain realms with God so they could be martyred for a greater resurrection. Do you all understand that? I'm just throwing that out. They must have had a hold to something about faith that most of the Christian community don't have because they had no fear of even death. What I'm saying is this. The church in this season has been, two or three years ago we talked about Stand up and be counted. Don't just go to church, but become the church. So it's still on the website. In this season, you're going to get an opportunity to do it. This is the opportune time for the realm of the unseen to manifest and you produce fruit like never before. I believe you're going to have to have spiritual two-befores to hold you up because the fruit's going to be so strong on your vine. It will. He says this. I'll give life to the dead. Now, some of them things that you thought was dead and gone, God's going to raise back up. And he speaks of the non-existent things. He has already foretold and promised as if they already existed. Abraham had human reason, says in the first deal, uh, in verse 18. For Abraham, human reason for hope being gone. See, you may be thinking that something's dead and gone. There's no human reason how it could ever be possible for this to come back. And that's where Abraham was, but he had a promise from God, a word from the living God. You will be the father of many nations. But I look at Sarah and I look at me and and all my money's gone, all my investments history, all my kids, they 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 are gone. I don't know where I'm at. My health seems to be waning. And I'm saying, God said, He takes sickness from my body. I, God says, I got a promise that when I put my hand to something, it'll prosper. I believe that he'll give me supernatural health. I believe divine health is coming right now. I believe that the peace of God that surpasses understanding is flooding my mind to garrison and guard my mind and my heart. I believe that because how can I not believe it? God's God. His word is true. And he said it. And I receive it. I wouldn't want to look God in the face and and say, well, it's too late for me. I want to look him in the face and say, you're right, Lord. You put something in me, it can't die until I'm finished. Till I've completed the race. Till I fulfill the mission. I don't care what my heart's saying. I don't care what... My body's saying, I am going to make a declaration. I'm today going to go all the way with God. I'll not back up. I will fulfill the destiny is put on my life because I'm pulling on the supernatural invisible realm and God's giving life to those non-existent things. I believe life to the dead. If you, if your body's trying to die on you, speak life into it. Okay. For human reason, hope being gone, no human reason there. There was no hope there. He hoped in faith. Everybody say, I hope in faith. He hoped in faith that he should become the father of many nations. Well, the seed was in him. He just thought it was dead. It's just like that peach tree. You throw enough of that soapy water on there, that baby's going to start growing. You're going to get some peaches. Just like God said, you're going to become the father of many nations as he had been promised. What have you been promised, J.R.? A 
Well, let me just kind of lay this out, Vern. He said, this is a promise. If you believe Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins, you believe that in your heart, then confess it with your mouth unto salvation. That's a promise. Have you done that, Vern? Then you're born again. And it also says there in Ephesians that the Holy Spirit will seal you and keep you safe until the actual day of the manifestation of your salvation. That's a promise. It's a promise that has to roll and ride and reign in the realm of the unseen. But there's other promises in this book that will manifest a promise and bring it out of the unseen into the natural realm when you put your hand to something. I don't care if you have put 335 applications in. You just ain't put the right one in. God said he'll provide for your family. The righteous will not beg bread. They will not go hungry. I'm going to hold him to that. I'll hold the covenant to that. So I've got to ask him for wisdom. And you know what? Then I've got to be willing to listen to wisdom. Because it's going to go across what you've been used to. Okay, what does it say? That the promise comes by what? Faith. I've still got seven minutes. Don't go to sleep yet. The promise comes by what? So that it might be by grace that the unmerited favor of God be on your life, Dewey. You know why he wants it on your life? And you know why he says that the just must live by faith? He wants the glory for your walk. He said, So shall your descendants be numberless. So what happened in verse 19? God encouraged him. And let me tell you how you can walk from the promise to the provision. He did not weaken in faith when he considered the utter impotence of his own body or the impossibility of the situation. He did not weaken in faith. Which his body was as good as dead, and of course Sarah's womb was dead. No unbelief. Everybody say, no unbelief. Will rob me in this season. My emotions will not go back there. My belief will take me to the promise of God. And my faith will manifest the promise of God. I'm sure glad we started talking about 40 days of word feasting and fasting. The last two days, I've had so much opportunity to just pray in tongues. I was concerned about even opening my mouth. I did a few times, had to repent, just get back. Just Because it seems to me like every time you do something that's going to be great, the word is so true, immediately Satan comes to rob that right out of your heart to just test you. Are you going to keep your mouth shut? That's what I could hear the, the devil say. Let me try you a little bit more. Let me just see if you'll keep your mouth shut and keep your focus on the promise of God instead of on the circumstance. I had to repent a few times, but I've been doing it a long time, so I pulled out pretty good. And... uh <laughs> So don't think you're the only one. Don't think like you're an Elijah, whoever it was. Wasn't it Elijah thought he was the only prophet left? He said, look, Elijah, you know, that little pity party. I got 7,000 more just like you that ain't bowed their knee. So I got out of my pity party. I said, okay, Lord, I'll stand back up. I feel like I'm under the water. Would you mind giving me a boost? <laughs> Do that Peter syndrome on me. Pull me out. <laughs> you know, 
I'm, every time I start a new series that God ta- tells me to start, every, th- every time I get an opportunity to shut my mouth up. And, and it, uh, even my wife tests me a little bit. 